Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy Tuesday to you. Thank you for pressing play. All of a sudden, I'm talking because I get excited. I get excited when I come on here to talk to all of you. I'm so happy that you joined me. Today, we're talking about we're going to take, take on our religion. We're going to take on big religion because the big news today, right? The big news today and yesterday, I was going to talk about it on yesterday's show, but I thought to myself it was a standalone. I thought this would be a great thing for me to talk about today with all of you. Big name Christian pastor, right? Best selling author, purity advocate, the guru of relationships, getting a divorce, renounced his faith. I no longer am a Christian by the tenets of which I thought a Christian was, he says. A lot of people had a problem with it, right? But all the major outlets, they're all coming together and they're all they are all like rallying behind this thing. It's like Christian advocate, uh, guru, purity guru, dating expert. They're all like just really making this a big deal, making it a big deal, the fact that he renounced his faith. But did he really renounce his faith? Has he really turned his back on God? Or is it the fact that he was steeped in a religious system that is so just polluted and corrupted and it's just Babylon, right? Confusion with mixture. That's what Babylon means. Nobody talks to anybody anymore. Remember that tower where God confused their languages? The word tower actually means altar, congregation. It means like an elevated pulpit. The, the tower, sort of is like how man created religion. And they said, we're gonna build this tower and then we'll be like God. So what did God do? He confused their languages. I see that playing out in many different ways, but one way that it plays out is the fact that you have all of these different denominations, right? You have Baptist, Pentecostal, Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, you have Christian, you have First Day, uh, Seventh Day Adventist, you have First Day something, you have Quakers, you have, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, right? How many different be, be Christian non-denominations, right? You have so many denominations, you have so many divisions in Christ, and yet there's supposed to be a unity of faith. We're all supposed to come together. We're all supposed to understand the same thing. We're supposed to know the same thing. We're supposed to be one united family. In God we trust, right? A lot of people in the comment section were like, Jacob, you're so deceived, man. The fact that God was on the wall, you don't even know. You don't even know. It's Satan. It's Satan. Don't you know that that God, it's, they're going to bring about the, 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 the laws and we're going to be... No, it's Lucifer. You're talking about Lucifer. That's the God of this world. You need to watch this channel. Jacob, that's not the God. That, that, that's the God of this world. A couple people came on here. I put the video up yesterday about how I saw that going up on the walls in the, in the schools, right? how in God we trust. And a lot of people are like, that's not the God. That's not the God that's on the money. Yeah, I think you're missing the point. You look at the natural world, it's like a big puzzle, right? This life that we have, it's like this beautiful masterpiece of a painting. And you get to understand how things go by the signs. Jesus said that you can discern the, the weather by the sky, but you can't pay attention to the signs. Come on. If you got in, in God we trust, starting in a few states, in the schools, that it's kind of like, spiritually speaking, in a few people in the world, they're starting to put trust in God because it's manifesting in the world. Now, I'm not saying that that God that they believe in is, the, is the, the most high, the creator of all. I'm not saying that. I'm saying pay attention to what's going on. And what's going on right now is Joshua Harris, this former pastor uh, and author of the book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, is renouncing his faith. By all measurements, he said, I have found for defining a Christian, I am not a Christian, Harris announced in a post on Instagram. <laughs> it's, it's the, he, Harris, who was the lead pastor of Covenant Light Church in Meriden, Maryland, was outspoken for his religious-based writing on love and sexuality. Following his 1997 bestseller, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, he went on to publish several of the books, but he was a best-selling author, right? Man, they were basically all the Christians gathered around and all the big TV shows gathered around. They said, this is, this is the guidebook for Dayton. And he's like, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. And he's repentant of it. But he also sort of sounds like he's given up on his faith, which is kind of goofy. Kind of goofy, in my opinion. Yeah, just give up on religion, Josh. 
You know, he said that some other people told him that there is another way to seek God, that you don't need to believe in the nonsense of the religious system, that you can actually, you know, seek God on your own, not condemn yourself in the things that you allow. Like I remember I went, when I was working at Daystar, I had a, I had a good friend and um, he's just such a great guy, right? And he was raised in a very strict Christian household, very, very strict Christian household. and. He was getting married, and I couldn't believe when he told me it'll be the first time I kissed her. I'm like, you've been dating this girl for how long? You haven't kissed her yet? It was like on the cheek, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. That's great restraint. But does that mean that you're any closer to God? Does that mean that when I was, I was, uh, you know, I was all, I was kissing and snuggling with the Dan Dan before he got married? Does that mean I was in sin? No, it doesn't. It just means that somebody believed that you shouldn't do it, that God would have a problem with it, and then that's what they do. That's what they do. I'm not gonna do this. But the problem is, you got a lot of people like Joshua Harris who probably were preaching things they didn't believe and then doing stuff on the down low or on the side, I'm not saying he was. I'm not saying he was, but a lot of times when this stuff happens, when you have these people who come against certain groups, right, you find out that they're a part of the group on the down low. There are a lot of people that'll condemn people in the things that they themselves allow. There's a great passage in scripture. It says, blessed are those that do not condemn themselves in the things in which they allow. You know, it's like if you wanna, if you wanna have a cigarette, it's really bad for you. You shouldn't do it. You should quit smoking. I quit smoking. I smoked for years. It was hard. I quit once, I started again later like a bonehead, and then boom, I quit again. Now, does that mean that when I was smoking, I was sinning against God? I probably was in my mind, but God, he looks to the heart. That's the thing. God doesn't look to the outward man, like uh, religion says, you know? He doesn't look to the outward man, he looks to your heart. He doesn't care if you're eating, you know, uh, uh, organic uh, oatmeal in the morning, or if you're eating, you know, uh, Fruit Loops. One's gonna be profitable for you, the other is not. That's why Paul said, all things are lawful, but not everything is expedient. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that I can go around hurting people? Does that mean that I can do terrible things? No, you can't break the loss, the love God, love others, can't do that. But does that mean that if you want to, uh, you know, have a have a Coca-Cola when you, you probably, it's probably not good for you, you can have one. Does that mean if you wanna, you know, you wanna make out with somebody while you're dating them, just because somebody wrote a book that says you shouldn't, does that mean that you're in sin? The sin becomes you doing it, thinking it's a sin. Blessed are those that don't condemn themselves in the things they allow. You gotta look, people, come on. This guy, this dude, okay, this is a big thing. This is a big thing. Now, while everybody's gonna make it out like he's turned his back, look, he's renounced his faith, look, he's a big phony baloney, he probably believed the stuff. But then he learned, as he got older, he was young when he wrote this thing, I think he was in his 20s or maybe 20, right? When he got older, he realized, wow, you know, I don't really, I don't really, uh, I don't really line up with this anymore. And so what is what happens? This is what religion does, bad religion. He then says, I don't believe in God anymore, right? I don't really have faith anymore now. I don't have faith anymore. Just because you don't agree with the tenets of a certain religion doesn't mean you can't believe in God anymore. Let me tell you something. How many of you out here? I know a lot of you out here. I'm talking to you. That's right. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Y'all, y'all gave up on God because, because religion was so corrupt. So but guess what? I don't go to church. Now, I'm not saying that I, I wouldn't go to church. So I haven't found a church that I believe that is sincere. My wife this morning, the Dan Dan and I, when we were having our coffee, right when she got back from the gym, we were talking. She's like, I want to go to a church. I'm like, yeah, I just don't know because everybody's got so many confusing beliefs. I mean, meet these people. They're, they're taught how to believe and then they teach you how to believe. And then Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he says, you make them twice more the son of hell than you are. You make him twice more the son of hell that you are. And the son of hell, what does that mean? Well, Luther had a problem with the idea of it, right? Selling indulgences. That's why he left the Catholic Church. They were making money. They're like, oh, you had somebody who died in your family? Well, they're probably in hell. They're probably tortured endlessly now, but you give some money. Well, you know, Pope will write you a note. Get out of jail, free pass. Luther was like, what are you doing? That's why I left. That's why I left the system. That's why I came on here to do what I did in 2008. That's why I, I share what I share, right? That's why I do this, because I wanna see people increased 
in their uh, faithful life. I want to see people know the joy that is found only when seeking the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. First, seek the kingdom of God. Seek the truth no matter what the cost. Does that mean that I can't make out with somebody if I'm dating? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I'm not saying you should. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. You see, because I am not the leader of a religion. I'm not going to create a law that is going to yoke you. There's a great passage in scripture. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And a lot of people think that means that, well, you know, is she a Christian? You know? Is the Dan Dan a Christian? You marry the Danielle. Is she a Christian? She believe in Jesus Christ? <laughs> because you can't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's not what it means. A yoke is something that, you know, stifles you. A yoke is something that makes you a slave. An unbeliever is somebody who is a slave, who is burdened, a beast of burden. That's what religion does. Don't be yoked with the lies of religion. Don't be yoked with that nonsense. Look, I've spent over you know, two decades writing this stuff, seeking, studying. I study every single day. I seek every single day, right? Go to my website, jacobisrael.com. It's free. Subscribe there. So if I'm not on YouTube, you, know, you, can, uh, you can see me and I'll put the videos up there. I got a lot of essays. You want to learn more? There's more to this stuff. There's more to the little, the little breadcrumbs that, that I've been given that I share with you. There's more to these things that we're told. Uh, Joshua Harris, if you, uh, you know, if you're listening to this, brother, don't give up on faith. How can you give up on faith? How can you give up on God? You can't give up on God because that's the only thing that's real in the grand scheme of things. Everything else, all of this is an illusion. It's an image. It's a vain show. That's what the word image means. It's like a vain show. It's a, uh, and you put your faith in this. You put your faith in the outward man. You put the, your faith in the works of man and you're not seeking the truth of God. In the grand scheme of things, when you're told in a religion that you should hate certain people, you know, he apologized to the LGBTQ com community because he probably was like, oh, you're going to burn at one point. And then he realized, wow, that's, that's not showing love. It's not showing love. Jesus went around. He hung out with prostitutes. He hung out with tax collectors. He hung out with all the low lowlifes, according to the, uh, you know, the religious people. And they were like, what are you doing with them? That's what they say to me, too. They're like, why are you talking to, why are you talking to these people? Why are you okay with these people? Why, why are you talking about so-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so? -and -so? Don't you know that they're like really fear-based, mongering, blah, blah, blah? Why do I do it? Because it's called love, people. You're going to judge me? Gonna, don't judge me. Don't be a judge. Don't be a judge. Let God judge. All right, so let's talk about how the Spirit expressly speaks in the latter times. This is in uh, Timothy 4. I want to I wanna, I wanna point this out because religion, such a goof, such a goof, you know? That doesn't mean that all churches and all that stuff is bad. doesn't mean that at all. It just means that it's a goof, all right? A lot of people are confused. Now, the Spirit speaks expressly that in the later times, the latter days, the days we're in, people will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits like you cannot kiss anybody until you're married. Don't even hold their hand in a movie theater while grabbing for popcorn. Don't have that little pinky dance where you have that moment where you get those butterflies in you. That's it's a sin. It's a sin. That's a seducing spirit. It's a seducing spirit. Gets you to believe something and then steals and robs your life. God wants you to live an abundant life. One that is filled with joy and peace and experience and creativity and abundance. And yet... You know, you got people in church teaching the prosperity gospel. You give the money, you get the money. You, you give the money, you get the money. You got to be in it to win it, right? And then when hard times come, people give up their faith. Why? Because prosperity teachers and all these confused, ignorant people, some would call garbage people. I, you know, I don't think they're garbage. I think they're just misled and they're probably profiting when they shouldn't be profiting. They're going to tell you a bunch of stuff to get what they want. You know, they're going to, because that's what they've been told too. Twice more, and then they make you twice more the son of hell. Then what happens when hard times come? You give up on God. When your marriage falls apart, you give up on God, right? Instead of, and you give up on your marriage too. And I'm, I'm not judging the dude. I've been divorced. I got custody of my kids. And I met the Danielle. You know, I remember when that happened, when I was in the, uh, everybody was looking at me like, oh, there's Jacob. Yeah, Mr. God, Mr. Jesus, Mr. Mr. Christ in you, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. I know the Bible and he's getting a divorce. Yeah, so funny. God hates divorce, right? God hates when you divorce yourself from the spirit of God. Marriage in the kingdom of heaven, there is no marriage. 
You're not given a marriage. You're like the angels in heaven. So, in the last days, what do they do? These people, they're going to depart from the faith. They're going to speak lies and hypocrisy, just like Joshua Harris did. And he realized it. And now he's given up his faith, which he shouldn't. Josh, just ask for the truth, no matter what the cost, man. There is more. There's a much deeper level. There's a much deeper level. You know, there's a much more intimate relationship that you can have. And who knows? You may end up finding that uh, things can be worked out with your wife. I'm not saying they should be or not. It's not my, my, uh, my opinion. It does not matter, right? You know, the only opinion that matters is the opinion of, of God. That's it, in the grand scheme of things. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron, because that's what happens. You speak lies and hypocrisy. You teach people that you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Then they have to do it because they, they're already inured to it, they're used to it, and then they beat themselves up. Consciences are saying. Now, listen to this, right? This is what the seducing spirits will do. They forbid you to marry. Forbidding to marry! and commanding you abstain from meats. Who does that sound like? Sounds like the Catholic Church to me. Can't be a priest if you're married. Can't eat meat on a certain day. Oh, unless the Pope changes it. Unless the Pope says it's okay, right? These are those uh, clouds without water. These are those whitewashed tombs that are full of dead men's bones. This is what that means. Religion is a lie and you gotta get past it. You gotta seek the truth. Commanding to abstain from meats which God created to be received with thanksgiving to them who know and believe the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused as long as it's with thanksgiving. Now, that doesn't mean you should abuse animals, okay? That doesn't mean that. And I'm not saying you should eat meat. I don't care what you eat. There's another passage in Scripture that says some people say it's good to eat meat. Some people say it's good to eat lettuce. Some people say to, uh, you know, um, support the moon. Some people say it's not good to see. And Paul's just like, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. And God is love. So love. God is peace. So have peace. God is sustenance. God is abundance. God is life. So have it. Seek it. Get in line with it. But remember, if you hate others, you don't know God. If you hate one person, if you're in the comment section and you hate me, hit this like for no reason, just because you just don't like me. Something you don't know about me. You don't, you don't know God. People that tell me that I'm wrong, hating on me, you don't know me. You don't know me. That's it. You don't know me. And you don't know God if you hate me. That's it. And I can't, I can't hate anyone either. It's a hard thing to love, but it's so, so important today. Now, if you put this in remembrance, you should be a good minister of Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine. But refuse, listen to this, profane and wives' fables. Old wives, because exercise yourself rather onto godliness. Don't listen to the nonsense. Seek the truth for yourself. Exercise godliness, righteousness, peace. In this letter to Timothy, this is important. This last line, so, so important. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. That doesn't sound like, you know, you give and you get. That sounds like, you know, we're going through a hard time. Everybody's going through a hard time, especially those that are in the kingdom of the world with the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of the world doesn't want the kingdom of God. Yeah, The devil doesn't like uh, the Christ in you. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like it, doesn't want it, because this is the world of the fallen. Yet we're here to set men free from it. Now listen to this last line, because this is beautiful. Because we trust in the living God, who is Savior of all men. Savior of all men. That word all, everybody. Savior of all men. Now listen to this last line, because this is the, this is the kicker. And I want you in the comments section to tell me what you think this means. Especially those that believe especially those that believe. Wouldn't it be only those that believe? I don't know. I leave that up to you. But I'll tell you one thing. I love you. And if I saw you drowning, even if you didn't love me, I'd try to save you. I'll talk to you soon. Please do subscribe, share it around, tell your friends, have the best day ever. And don't renounce your faith. You know, renounce the religious system and come to the knowledge of the truth and the stature of the perfect man. Seek God. Seek Christ. Seek the truth. All you gotta do is ask for it. And it doesn't go by a name. Doesn't matter if this is in whom God we trust. It's, it's happening. It's bubbling up. Aren't you glad you're a part of it? I am. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.
subscribe and share and all of that stuff too. It's helpful. And I bet Ethan will be super happy if you subscribe too. If Elniel said it right, you better smash that like button too, baby.